Hello and welcome to Access Sportsnet Lakers, driven by your Southern California Honda dealers, Chris McGee, big game James Worthy, Robert Ory. I was, wasn't it? It was a good old-fashioned. Right there. Good old-fashioned. Uh, we got Allie Clifton here joining us. We got Brez and Trudell <laughs> working the Zooms. Big game James doing the, doing the clap. It's a good game. James, that was one of the most impressive <clears throat> extended runs of the year for the Lakers. It was 75-68 Denver with 341 left in the third. 46-15 to 15 run basically the rest of the way until that final minute when Denver scored a little bit. 46 to 15 run, and they did it on both ends of the floor. I'm not sure if I've ever heard of a run like that. I know we've had some extensive runs in Against this league. It's a great team, but, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I got to tell you, you know, the game started out kind of muggy and stagnant, and Denver was kind of having their way with not so much Jokic, but the other players, you know, Green and Port. I mean, uh, Murray uh, were getting the job done. And I, that dive <clears throat> that Schroeder made right before halftime, he dove twice in one play, and I, and I said to myself, that's an energetic play. And when they came out in the third, you could tell that the energy was there. Uh, three players, and Rob's going to add one. There's, the, there's that double dive that just kind of said, look, this is what we need to do. But Kuz blocking shots from the weak side a couple times. Kuz getting offensive rebounds. Caruso, uh, I mean Caruso. Doing what he does, getting extra possessions, uh, making the right plays, steals, the points they got off of turnovers, 66 points in the paint. Uh, they did some incredible things, 10 steals. Uh, I just thought that third quarter and that second unit, along with Rob's guy, uh, you know, just made the game what it was supposed to be. And they took Denver right out of it. I mean, we thought it was going to be about the bigs. But the, it wasn't. the stars. <laughs> it was they, they they locked up yeah. the bigs, but the rest of the team, including the bench, just did a remarkable job. You know, it, he liked mm. this game, didn't he? Yeah, he loved he loved this I game. Like I, the, I like to watch there. a game hey, like this. You know, the thing about it, we always talk about stats. Do you know what the most interesting stat was tonight? Steals? Nope. Caruso was minus two. Wait, what? That never he happens. He was minus two. <laughs> and for it. him to be minus huh. two, if I told you Caruso was nope. minus two and had zero points, you'd have said we lost the game. Yeah. But he went out and did so many things defensively. We talk about him, things that don't show up in stats. And I wanted to point that out because he was giving his body up. He was rotating yeah. defensively. He was getting guys in the right position. He might have scored any points. It was a minus two, but it doesn't always show in, in the stats. And so I just wanted to point that out that that, because we talked about him before in the, in, in the pregame show. Yeah. So he still get it done even if you don't score or plus minus. They need to add more categories. And then that minus two would turn into a plus 10 or plus 12. If they added what Rob just talked about, getting guys involved, being in the right place. They don't, they, I, I don't think stat people look at all of that. They did a good job, Keith. I know you got to go. <laughs> so much, no, so many great things. I love when you're this fired up. There's so many things to talk about. This, that's what makes these shows fun. But uh, we got to go back to Staples Center because Dennis is with Mike Trudell. Never rushing you, big game. All right, Dennis, you guys really turned it on in that second half, holding Dever to 36 points. Uh, where did that defensive effort come from? What was the adjustment, and how did that play out? I think we had to play with uh, a lot more energy, you know, in the second uh, in the second half. Uh, first half, we didn't have no energy. Um, I mean, we turned it on at halftime. You know, we spoke about it, and I think we, we turned it on. You may have ignited that, Dennis, uh, with that play where you streaked down the floor in transition and dove not once but twice. Uh, I, I know that's just the way that you play, but can you take us through that play and how you think that may have had an impact? I just, you know, try to help uh, the team win, and um, I think we, we, we didn't have that energy, you know, to come out with, and um, I just tried to help my team, you know, pick up the energy and, um, you know, Dove on the floor uh, twice, tried to get the ball, um, and got the 24-second call. So um, I think that motivated everybody, and um, we did a great job after that. So does it take away any of the pain from the dive if you get the ball back, right? If, if the mission gets accomplished, it doesn't hurt as much? Is that true? <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> we got the ball, so uh, it didn't hurt that bad. But when I probably shower, uh, it's going to burn a little bit. Yeah, yeah, you might feel that one a little bit later. Yeah. Um, all right, uh, last thing for you, just that uh, you had a really nice offensive rhythm going tonight. Uh, 
but Frank Vogel has said, and really uh, Billy Donovan, your coach, last year said the same thing, that you always bring the defensive effort regardless of your rhythm on offense. Is that a point of pride for you, and, and how has that been the case for you in your career? Yeah, I think uh, I've been doing it my whole career. Uh, in Germany, I started with, you know, playing defense and try to pick up 94 feet, you know, um, change, the, change the rhythm a little bit from the opponent. And um, on the offensive end, you know, it's just fluent. When we get stops, you know, we just go out and run. And, uh, um, I mean, tonight, you know, I hit a couple of shots, layups, you know, free throws, and um, it was great. All right, Dennis, we appreciate the time. Hope it doesn't burn too much in the shower, all right? <laughs> Thank you. This is the play we're all talking about. Big game. I had mentioned a buddy of mine texted saying, ask big game. It was the Schroeder double dive that turned things around. You actually said that right off the top of the show. Look at Frank Vogel coming out to the yeah. floor. Yeah, normally, normally the teammates run over there and pick you up right away. But Vogel was like, look, that's what we need to get back in the game. And that's, that was a big play. Uh, Why can a play like that turn it around for a team? Because you see the energy and the effort and the guy giving up his body because that wasn't just a regular dive. He kind of did a flop, hit the floor, had the energy to get up and do it again because he could have just let it roll because the shot clock would have ran out. But, no, he wanted to get that effort. Big game, we, we love this guy. We, we've talked a lot about him, his change of pace, his speed, what he brings to the team. This was, I think, a signature game for him in a Laker uniform because of what he did on both sides, hassling Murray all night long, the double dive as we just showed. But big game, also 21 points, 7 of 9, 2 for 2 from 3, but on a night where the Lakers struggled from the free throw line, he was 5 for 5. Yeah, you know, uh, in Atlanta, it, it, Trey Young, you know, he took on that challenge. Tonight, it's Murray. He loves to take on the best guards. He picks them up full court, gets his body into them. But then, you know, Gita, offensively, uh, he picks and chooses the right shots. You know, you don't yeah. think he's going to do anything. He's sitting there, and all of a sudden, he knocks down threes. Uh, before you know it, he's getting to the cup for a, a kiss off the glass. Uh, he's under control, <clears throat> realizing that, you know, uh, LeBron and AD are the guys. But when he sees an opportunity, he seizes on it. And tonight, uh, he played a complete game against a pretty good uh, guard over there at Denver in Murray. Yeah, he was fired up tonight. He even got a tech. And the most interesting stat, saying this again, is he finally made two threes in a row in a game. So that was one of his things. He was only yeah. hitting one three a game, but now he made two. So that means he's getting his rhythm back, getting his shot back. So it's exciting to see everybody get involved. You know, so during this time, we're not watching the games together in the room, but some of us are out in the newsroom. And Allie sits a couple seats behind me. It's funny. THT, I feel like we have these conversations every single game. Producers, all of us, like, turn around, like, this kid's for real. Yo, this kid's for real. Like, THT, <laughs> he just makes plays. He has literally made the coaching staff put him in this rotation by making plays time and time again. He's now part of a nine-man rotation. Bill Orm, our friend of the show, had a great tweet tonight. He said it was 73-67 when THT checked in. When he checked out, 23-7 Laker run. He had 17 tonight, Rob. Eight of 11. Add in a couple steals. Mm -hmm. Of course, he always has that reverse layup, a dunk. He, he's, he's, he deserves the recognition he's getting. Yeah, he had his patent reverse layup. And the thing about it, you, we can talk about his offense, but when he was switching out on Jokic, he was playing Jokic tough. He just let Jokic back him down. When he got switched on Murray, he was playing Murray tough. He didn't let him blow by him or get an easy jump shot. And that's the sign of a guy who can do it on both ends of the court. This guy is a phenomenal player. I, I said this a couple games back that he was going to take some guys' minutes. You because said it I said two weeks it, ago. You know, and because he deserves it, because you just cannot hold a talent like this back because he's very crafty at getting to the boards. And when he goes to the boards, if he's not going to lay that thing up, he's good at finding uh, treasure in the paint for a dunk or kicking it out for a three. Big game, you know what impresses me the most? It's not that he's 20 years old, the wingspan, how he's been able to just integrate with superstars and play. The fact that he had, what, three, four DNPs in a row and just stayed patient as a 20-year-old kid? And then he got his shot in Chicago, and he hasn't left the floor since. Well, I mean, as a coach, you have to really discipline young players. He, as great an offense as he was possessing, he was making some defensive mistakes. Mm -hmm. You know, just not because he wasn't having the effort. And so I think coach had to, you know, you know, deal with Morris and let Wes Matthews, you know, have their minutes. I don't think it was as productive. And then he says, look, I got this kid over here. I have to play him. He gets in that lane whenever he wants to. I haven't seen anybody that disallows him to get in the lane. And once he gets in there, he takes these long strides to get by you or 
beside you, and then that seven-foot wingspan, you can't stop it. Or he's making a nice pass. Yeah. Smart player, a sponge for information. You can tell that he's, he's learning how to play the game. He's not making a lot of mistakes. Uh, Got to play him, Rob, just like you said. Taylor, two halves. We always talk about how tough it is to play that first half after a long road trip when you come home. Let's get you to the highlights. You can see it for yourselves. Seven games.